Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic and World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series. Uh, we are on the 8th of March 1986 here in World Class. Um, three first run matches, uh, uh, one of which is kind of an enhancement match, Jerry Allen, Mark Youngblood. And uh, that is where we open the program. Just get it out of the way so I can run through the matches really quickly. There is a music video. Uh, Kevin Von Erich uh, spending time with uh, children in a children's hospital in Dallas, Texas. Uh, don't know what song they used. Actually, would be interested to see what song they used for that. But obviously, on the network, they've, they've uh, blanked out the original track for obvious reasons. Alan, a, a newcomer here over the last month or two, um, shows good wrestling ability. Had the match with Rick Rude last week, which kind of was a surprise with the advent of Rude being considered the new world champion. Again, WCWA beginning and uh, now world class regarded with a world title. Seems a little weird to have the AWA, NWA, WCWA, and WWF titles, but that's what you have. Um, Mark Youngblood trips over his adversary and uh, goes out to the floor, actually almost landing in a chair, literally, a steel chair on the outside of the ring near the ringside table. Does not go that way and doesn't go very well for him. You see the tie up there by uh, Alan. Alan, uh, you know, almost in kind of a, a grappling sort of position. Um, Youngblood manages to switch over into a Boston Crab and gets a near fall. He gets a near submission. Doesn't get what he wants out of it though. And then they kind of do a robo spot, rowboat spot. Literally, the whole match is exchanging of holds. Very different from what we might see today, uh, or at least the first four or five minutes is that anyway. Um, drop kick by Youngblood kind of changes the pace of the match a bit. Youngblood though finds himself in the grips of a hammerlock, doesn't get all he wants out of that, and um, eventually we do see Allen uh, get back on the offense, um, breaks down the match with chin locks and, and the like, and then um, this is a, a particular episode that's not the best of uh, video quality, so it doesn't age well, maybe there's a bit of damage. Allen, though, throws himself through the middle rope on the uh, shoulder hit the 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 uh, ring post spot. I mean, he threw himself onto the arena floor. If you need to do an extreme bump that looks like a million bucks but is safe, this might be worth looking into. As Alan does a phenomenal job with it, he's back in the match as though nothing happens. That's how I know it was safe anyway. Young blood with the suplex from the outside in and uh, continues to remain in control. One. Two, and we see um, several near falls, both men jogging for position in a small package, the referee having difficulty maintaining whose shoulders are down. Eventually, um, there is a pinfall, even though they attempt to continue wrestling because they don't acknowledge the pinfall. Mark Youngblood does walk away with the victory, as mentioned. Then we go into a... Um, Music video with Kevin Von Erich, which was nicely done. Missing Link against uh, Ravishing Rick Rude for the America's title, Sunshine. With Missing Link, Rude obviously with Percy Pringle. Uh, their alliance continues. Um, Rude is uh, in a new, I guess, blue blazer. Not the, not the mass wrestler, but a blue jacket. Um, Link does what Link normally does. He uses the head as his primary offensive weapon. Uh, hits a, hits a uh, back suplex, does the link. Rude with the forearms and manages to get the link off his feet with wrestling-related maneuvers. One thing that is negative about the link is that he doesn't sell nearly as much as he should. Sunshine on the outside is getting the crowd behind the link. Rude slows things down with the reverse chin lock, and uh, they get a, a few minutes out of that. Link certainly has every tool necessary to go into a longer match if needed. However, if you notice, Link's matches are usually 10 minutes and under at most, and uh, the Link then 
makes his way to the second rope on the inside. Uh, tries for the um, what was going to be the headbutt. However, um, Percy Pringle comes up with his weaponry and tries to immediately go after uh, the Link to knock him off the turnbuckle. Link goes to the outside. This is not good for the missing Link. Obviously, he wants to protect Sunshine. Obviously, he wants to get his hands on the uh, manager, but this leads to a uh, count out uh, for everything, and uh, nothing gets solved between Rude and Link. Obviously, if you want to take the match around the horn, that's one way to do it. We then move to a, another very common match, the Freebirds and the Von Erics. In this case, the Freebirds, uh, two-thirds of the six-man tag team champions, Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts, against, I believe this one was Carrie and... Um, Carrie and Lance, if I remember, nope, I'm wrong, Kevin and Carrie this particular time. Uh, uh, I'm thinking Carrie and Lance because they do tag up within a couple of weeks here, and obviously the Von Erichs still on top. Carrie's motorcycle accident has not happened yet. This is in 1986, so we'll have an episode where we talk a lot about that. Um, obviously they don't reveal that his foot is, uh, amputated as a result, but that is part of the fact. Some people say Kerry never the same when he comes back after that. And other people say he was able to win the Intercontinental title in WWF and not a big deal. Anyway, Michael Hayes does a lot of stalling before he grabs a chin lock and tries to hold on. Uh, Hayes does a lot of walk and talk, but he roberts in with Kevin Vaughn, Eric, and Kevin takes the match down to the mat with a side headlock, among other things. Um, both of the Freebirds do a lot of stalling for the first several minutes here. Uh, the discus punch by Kerry gets things going back in the way of the Vaughn Erics. The Vaughn Erics are certainly a team that does not want to take a backward step. And so, uh, clothesline by Kerry on Buddy Roberts does not get the job done fully. Hayes comes back in and manages to uh, get Carrie back down. Um, Hayes is more aggressive with his cheating also. He goes back to the reverse chin lock. Gets, a, gets several minutes out of that. Uh, a tag off. Back to Buddy Roberts. Roberts and Hayes have cut the ring off on Von Eric. This is not good. Kevin waiting on the outside has not been in the match nearly as much. He also disappeared for a few weeks doing what I don't know, maybe an injury. But anyway, um, all four men end up in the ring when Michael Hayes breaks up a version of the claw. Uh, meanwhile, on one side, Kevin and uh, Buddy are there. Roberts and um, um, Gary are on the other side. And Michael Hayes causes a disqualification eventually when he takes the referee down, takes the belt off the referee, tries to use it, but obviously that leads to a disqualification. Victory for the Von Eriks and the uh, the end of the, the figure four. But anyway, we see a continuation of uh, good action here as we close this week on World Class.